Let's talk about intraductal papilloma. One-liner, it's a breast lesion that occurs in a duct and it's histologically comprised of papillary projections, meaning there's a fibrovascular core with epithelial and myoepithelial layers. Epidemiology, it's 5.3% of benign breast biopsies. Most are central. We'll talk about the difference between central and peripheral in a bit. The average age range is most are 30 to 50 years old. There's a two-fold risk of cancer for central papilloma and a higher fold risk for peripheral papilloma. Central papilloma are tumors that involve large ducts and are usually solitary, as you can see here. And peripheral papillomas involve the terminal ductal terminal duct lobular units and are usually multiple and multiple papillomas appear to be associated with a higher risk of carcinoma than your solitary central papillomas. Here is an ultrasound of an introductal papilloma. Here is a gross image showing a large multinodular papillary structure protruding into the lumen of a large cyst. Here is a histologic image of a central papilloma. Again, it involves the large duct, has regions of sclerosis, better highlighted in B here, and C, as we look closer, shows basally oriented myoepithelial cells, these cells with clearer cytoplasm lining the fibrovascular cores. D shows P63 highlighting the nuclei of the myoepithelial cells, as you can see, it's intact, as well as the peripheral wall, the myoepithelial cells are highlighted as well. This is an example of a peripheral papilloma, and it involves a tubular duct lobular unit. The solid arrow shows foci of intraductal carcinoma, and the dotted arrow shows fibrovascular core covered by both ductal and myoepithelial cells. As you can see, it fills many lobules within the TDLU. Here's another example of a P63 highlighting myoepithelial cells in a, an introductal papilloma. Here's another instance of an introductal papilloma. If we did a P63, the myoes would highlight within the lesion as well as here, surrounding the periphery. Introductal papillomas can have proliferative fibrocystic change like usual ductal hyperplasia, as you can see here, where you can see haphazard arrangement of the nuclei with some overlapping and some slit-like spaces. Your differential diagnosis is intraductal papilloma with ADH or DCIS, papillary DCIS, encapsulated papillary carcinoma, solid papillary carcinoma, tall cell carcinoma with reverse polarity, adenomyoepithelioma, and nipple adenoma. Treatment, there is no consensus for intraductal papilloma without any atypia found on biopsy, but complete surgical excision is often performed to rule out any unsampled regions of atypia. And on biopsy, if there is atypia, then obviously complete surgical excision is recommended. Here are my references. And if you learned something from this video, it would mean so much to me if you give a like and subscribe. Thank you.